Hi friends, how you doing? Good to see you. This is the part one for the transitions workshop to help integrate more music through play into your classrooms. So for transitions, I would say my voice is the number one instrument and then I always have a bell and I want to always give the five minute heads up, the two minute heads up, one minute and then the transition song that indicates what comes next. So when I bring a class to come together, I would say, for example, maybe we just had free play and now it's music time. So we would do the cleanup song. So again, I've given the five minutes, two minutes, one minute heads up, and then wait for the room to be engaged by listening. Everybody clean up, clean up, clean up. Everybody clean up, clean up now. Everybody clean up, clean up, clean up. Everybody clean up, show me how. And of course, that's playing and singing while we're cleaning up. So always keeping that element of play while we're doing work so that cleanup doesn't become negative. It's still play. It's still important work. Again, one of, another essential life skill to enjoy cleaning up. <laughs> Good. And then once everyone's done their job, they can come to the circle. They find their spot on the carpet. So maybe you'll place a mat for them. And if you want to have um, the element of rhythm and shakers and scarves for movement, that's always great. Have them in a basket, but don't quite have them in the center of the circle, have them closer to your teacher chair, just so there's not that temptation to, to pick up the scarves and eggs, shaker eggs, right away. But of course that is what they're going to want to do, so that's how that goes. Um, but as they assemble and they get into the circle, I'm going to ask them to turn their listening ears on. And we're going to put our talking voice in our pocket. And then we're going to turn our singing voice on. La. So something kind of simple like that, so they know that it's time for music class. I then love to bring a Octavia the Octopus puppet. And I think a good way to like calm the circle down is to pretend that your puppet is very shy and it doesn't want to be startled. They are very loving and caring. So I have the bag of surprise. Of course, I let her peek her head out and then she kind of likes to take small steps. And then of course, because she's the octopus, you can get the children to kind of be brave and maybe shake her hand or she can still be quite shy and then whisper to you what she wants to share. So again, this is giving permission to some of the kids who are also feeling a little bit hesitant to be coming and singing. Uh, in the transition seminar, we talked about the physical stress, the anticipated stress, the mental stress, and how all of these things through play form character, push their comfort zones, and then teach them how to deal with that stress so that they can get over it and therefore participate. Okay, so once we've got Octavia to say hello, she's so shy, she's so shy, and what does she wanna say? Oh, she wants to play. Doggy, doggy, where's your bone? So this is integrating kind of a uh, props through play, right? So I'm showing the heart that the doggy doggy hides. So of course, there's different ways to do it. We have, for Valentine's Day, I have a twist. It's doggy doggy, where's your heart? Somebody took it from your cart. And so one of the children in the circle is chosen while everyone closes their eyes. And I slip the heart into their hands and they can either hold it on their lap, flat, or they can do like a little hello, thank you prayer. But as long as they're hiding the heart and all the children are doing this gesture, 
then they have to guess. They have three guesses to see who has the heart. So I introduce that as something that they can look forward to. But first, we have to say hello. So again, you can let your puppet remind you. Oh, oh, I forgot to sing the Hello Everybody song. You know, silly things like that. Uh, that kind of brings some change and some surprise. Like, oh, oh, what did I forget? What did I forget? You know, those kind of things, they draw their attention back into their bodies. Okay, so this is a song I wrote for the um, Hello All My Friends. And again, I'm going to put lots of the resources of things that I've found that are helpful and then things that I've created. And feel free to use these songs in your classroom. And we'll share more resources as we go. Okay, so this is in the key of C. kids to get little waivers out so they can say hello to each other. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi. And then I give the opportunity to go around in the circle to say each child's name. Now we can ask them what their name is if they're on the more confident side. And we can also just say, oh, would you like to share your name? And if not, then I can just help them. And maybe I can also give the option of, do you want me to come back to you? And then see if they've built the courage as you've gone around the circle. So let's pretend it's Ben. Hello, Ben, it's nice to see you. circle and you're acknowledging uh, each child okay so that's a good way to to welcome everybody um, we also have our hello everybody how are you how are you how are you hello everybody how are you how are you today and then you can go on to hello to our friends how are you and if you have uh, any parents or duty parents. Hello to our parents. How are you? And that's this is a, a hello song that's more useful while the kids are allowed to continue playing. You're just letting them know that we're officially starting our day. So again, it's a transition. It's helping kids realize, oh yeah, here I am at preschool. I've done my goodbyes. I've washed my hands. And now here I am at preschool. It's a great way that music allows kids to be more mindful which is another topic we'll come up to. Okay, so we've had Octavia, again, is our transition puppet. So she helps us to say what's next. Okay, so I'm gonna go. Yes, yes. Oh, you also want to play the Enchanted Forest? Yes, okay, we can do that. So again, you're giving a little more suspense of what we're going to do. So for this game, what I love to do is um, I'll give you some feedback. This is a game where you can enjoy music in small bits as the kids get to move their bodies. So this is a useful song if you've got a wiggly group and you just want them to uh, have a balance of movement and music. So I came up with this song. Um, it, it's allowing the kids again to be in a circle but they get to grow from a small seed into a tree. So the song goes like this. They're hiding their heads. They're curled up as a little ball. The sun comes up. So they just pop up their heads. And then the, I can say that and they can echo it or they say it with me. The sun comes up. The sun comes up. So maybe at this point they're standing. The rain falls down. The rain falls down. And again, they can use their voices to go down. Or, so 
sound like a, almost like a, a horse. Nay! So exploring different things with their voices. And the wind begins to blow, and the wind begins to blow. And that's where I allow them to spin, and then they freeze. Now one hand is going to be open like branches, and the other one is going to be closed. And what you're going to put in there will be something like a magic gem or something very special. So I have this little heart and they, or a jewel or, you know, something that's big enough, not, not a bead, not that small, but something that they can hide in the palm of their hand. So enchanted forest means that it's actually a forest who are people that can move, trees that move. And so the child again has three guesses to see who has the heart in their hand in the branches that are closed. So as again, the kids are walking through each other, if they see anyone move, they gently tap them on the forehead, gently, <laughs> or just point to them. Maybe that's easier for a younger group. And that friend will just curl up into a seed which will mean, against, of course, they're waiting for the beginning of the next game. Or they can turn into a rock, you know, something in the forest floor, an acorn, something that keeps them hopefully in one spot. Although when I've said rock, I've had some kids that decide to roll around and not necessarily block or trap the human coming through the forest, but, you know, it's a way to get a little bit silly. Uh, again, silly's good, but we just have to bring it back. Um, so as the child goes through, the trees can move their branches, but again, only when the adult, or rather the human is not looking. They walk through the forest, they tap the child on the head to see if they have the enchanted rock or crystal, you could say, or the magic stone. Of course, the child who has it then shows that they have it if they're chosen. And if after three guesses, they haven't found the right person, you just say, okay, who's enchanted? And they've got the jewel, the enchanted jewel. Okay, great. And then you get all the kids to go back into a ball, into a seed. And again, the song is, the sun comes up, the sun comes up. The rain falls down, the rain falls down, and the wind begins to blow, and the wind begins to blow. Freeze! And again, one hand closed, branches open, all the kids close their eyes, you go around, you tuck the secret crystal into one of their hands. Again, all the kids have one hand open, one hand closed, so it all looks the same. Great, so that's the Enchanted Forest game. Then, if you have um, different Valentine's themes, that's on my mind because we've just passed Valentine's, um, there's really great books. Um, there was an old lady who swallowed a rose, right? So the kids might have already done that song with you so they already know the melody. There was an old lady who swallowed a rose. Why do you suppose she swallowed that rose? She swallowed the rose to give to her friend. Again, so you can build a story and I will uh, reference that book so you can see. It's a rose and then a ribbon and then glitter. And then she puts jewels and candies and you know, again, all of these things to make a Valentine's card. It's a really great song and a book. So you can use a combination of visuals with your songs. Um, the 12 days of Valentine's. So the kids already know the melody of the 12 days of Christmas. So you can incorporate those kind of books and songs. Uh, let's see. We have, oh, another good fun one that we love is who took the cookie from the cookie jar? And you took the cookie from the cookie jar. And again, you're going through the circle. Who, me? Yes, you. Couldn't be. Then who? And you go through each child in the circle. Ben. Ben took the cookie from the cookie jar. Who, me? Yes, you. Couldn't be. Then who? And you go around the circle. 
Um, another one to go with Valentine's is the Skinnamarinky Dinky Dink. Skinnamarinky Dinky Dink, Skinnamarinky Do. I love you. Skinnamarinky Dinky Dink, Skinnamarinky Do. I love you. I love you in the morning and in the afternoon. Love you in the evening underneath the moon. Skin em a rinky dinky dink, skin em a rinky do. I love you, I love your singing. I love you, you're so terrific. I love you too. Boo boo be do. Mwah. And again, that's a Sharon Lewis and Bram tune. And they have so many fun ones. So fun. Um, and then I'm going to talk about the topic of songs that are great for kids who have the wigglies, right? If you're finding at this point your kids are getting a little crazy, go right into I'm gonna shake, shake, shake my sillies out. Shake, shake, shake my sillies out. Shake, shake, shake my sillies out. Wiggle my waggles away. Gonna jump, jump, jump my funnies out. Jump, jump, jump my funnies out. Jump, jump, jump my funnies out. Wiggle my waggles away. You can go through laugh, clap, tap, and all those fun movements. Okay, and now if you want to bring your class back to sitting, just to give a good balance for the kids who love to be more physical, but also acknowledge the ones that don't want so much chaos, right? And if you've already noticed that they're trying to get out of here, they can always stand by you or more around the periphery of your class. So you can bring out your shakers. I usually have them in a basket. And when I bring out the basket, I start singing. I won't pick it up. I won't pick it up. I'll place it on the floor and I won't pick it up. So this gives the chance for the kids to choose a color from the basket or you can pre-choose and just simply place the egg shaker in front of them. And as you're singing, I won't pick it up. <laughs> Hopefully they register that. I've had lots of classes where they, they simply see the shaker they see it and they start doing the rhythm with me as I sing, I won't pick it up. So you can gauge where you help the kids, right? If you know that they're just going to pick it up because they see it, you can just place it back on the floor and I won't pick it up. And you know, just make a little bit more eye contact and just help them register. But at the same time, if you're going to have a little bit of chaos at first and then bring it back into a structured temptation situation, um, there's no harm in letting the kids um, do the rhythm with you first. And then once they all sit, then ask them to place it down. Then when they're all watching, they can observe how their other friends are not picking it up as they sing that song. Okay. So again, that's another way to incorporate more rhythm. Um, if you wanted to do more scarf dances and that kind of thing like that, it's the um, wiggle and a wiggle. We're going to wiggle and wiggle and wiggle and stop. We're going to jump and a jump and a jump and stop. You know, so just again, showing a balance of movement with song. We're going to do hop and hop and hop and stop. So again, if I really find that the scarves kind of allow just a little bit more movement and rhythm with a song that lets them move and shake. Good? Yeah, yeah. Um, lots of our other favorite ones. Baby Beluga. That's a nice one to bring everything down. Again, that's by Raffi. Um, Oh, fun songs that you can mix. So I would then say, okay, friends, we're going to sing Old MacDonald Had a Unicorn. And right away you get some good laughs, right? And maybe, again, Octavia could be unicorn. What's that? It's not unicorn? 
there's no unicorn on the farm. So again, you can play up some more jokey bits to just kind of get the kids to um, go beyond what's traditionally on the farm. Um, and if they, if you have the kids that want to correct you, you can be okay. Old MacDonald had a safari or old MacDonald had a magical castle, you know, so we can do lots of variations. I love also, um, rather than the traditional five little monkeys jumping on the bed, you can go through the five little monkeys, right? But if you want to incorporate, uh, finger puppets, I've decided that to add a little more humor to a song that they already know and that they're already familiar with, it can be three little monkeys and a donkey jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped its head. Ouch! That hurt! So, Angie called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. Okay, and then again you go through each little character and yeah, just add a little fun. Three little monkeys and a donkey. Oh, and some friends were singing that hilarious honky tonky donkey <laughs> song. I'll reference that in uh, the second part of our transitions because that is a hilarious, hilarious book. Honky tonky donkey, stinky donkey, all the rest, right? So again, felted finger puppets, you just start with your simple little hollowed out felt and then you add in your sweet faces and details. And I will be posting some YouTube tutorials of how to make these felted puppets, finger puppets. Okay, so how are we doing? I'll just check in here and again. When the kids don't know that you're at a loss for what's going on, you just get out the handy dandy puppet and check your notes. Uh, wanting to talk about mindfulness. So songs that kind of make kids aware of how to fill up a friend's bucket and how to empty the bucket. Um, if you have in your classroom already a bucket uh, or a jar that has maybe uh, small marbles or if you're worried, worried about choking hazards, something that's just a little bit bigger but can fit in the jar or the kindness bucket. And so every time you see friends doing something kind, checking in on them, saying I love you, giving a hug, that is an example of filling the bucket. So one, love, one uh, little melody, instead of found a peanut, found a peanut, found a peanut last night. Last night I found a peanut, found a peanut last night. So that's the melody that we'll use. And that's a traditional song. I'll have to reference who wrote that one. Um, I changed it to fill my bucket, fill my bucket, fill my bucket last night. Last night I filled the bucket, filled the bucket last night or fill your bucket fill your bucket fill your bucket at preschool what are the ways to fill a bucket at our lovely preschool and you can go around the circle and ask kids to give you an example of how you fill a bucket at preschool or at home for their parents and of course an example of seeing a child get their backpack for their friend, or maybe get them a mat when they come to circle, or reminding them that they're okay and they've got a good friend if they've got some tears at goodbye to and transition time, right? So again, talking about the kids, how to deal with stress, taking that deep breath and filling your own bucket, knowing that you're safe and you're okay, right? Okay. Any other mind? And I'll put a, a list of other songs that are great for mindfulness. Uh, Zen Kids is one that I mentioned in the presentation at your meeting, so that's a good one. Lots of mindfulness songs that incorporate breathing and yoga, too. 
Um, yeah, lots of songs that celebrate family. Uh, Rafi has a really beautiful one. All I really need is a song in my heart, food in my belly, and love in my family. So the melody is, all I really need is a song in my heart, food in my belly, and love in my family. And I need some good water for drinking. So he lists all these wonderful things that keep a child healthy and happy. So that's a beautiful one for mindfulness themes. Um, one that I really loved when I did my Waldorf school training was uh, talking about a knight and the castle and a knight slaying the dragons and the princess and the queen and the kings. And, and so when I had a very chaotic situation, rather than saying, stop your body, I would say something like, show me your crown and I would maybe or maybe do it with an opera voice like show me your crown and all the kids would stop and it's this action of here let me put down my puppet it's this action of just being like yes dignified and maybe folding their fingers and putting the palms in their hands and then they've just got this sense of pride something that they um, know how to exude because they read these stories with you about slaying dragons. So this is the song that I put with that. Is um, a knight and a lady went riding one day far into the forest away, away. And again, you can get the kids to pretend that they're riding a horse, right? A knight and a lady went riding one day Far into the forest, away, away Dear knight, said the lady, I plead, have a care This forest is evil, beware, beware And uh, uh, <laughs> a, a scary red dragon they spied on the grass the lady said, sorry, alas, alas. The knight slayed the dragon, the lady was gay. They rode off together away, away. Yeah, so those kind of storytelling songs, right? Where there's the suspense, there's someone that has the sense that something is wrong. And then there's the victor who slays the dragon, but of course you can mix it where the princess slays the dragon, right? So um, instead of the lady, I pray have a care, this forest is evil, beware, beware. Uh, you can have the dear lady, said the knight, I pray have a care, this forest is evil, beware, beware. And if you don't want to use extreme words like evil, you can just say this forest is scary, beware, beware. So again, just kind of giving a sense of suspense, but then the lady slayed the dragon, the knight he was gay, they rode off together away, away. And that's the end of that one. And again, um, if the kids are wanting to gallop like a horse around the room you can then transition that song to more of like a physical song rather than a sitting and just using their shakers because that that one has a very simple beat right so you can get the that heartbeat another fun thing with shakers is rhythm if you want to incorporate more rhythm so i let the kids go around in a circle and if they want to put the egg into the hand or they want to do it and tap it on their lap or if they want to clap, uh, if they want to stomp their feet and of course they can do it just from a sitting position. I go around the circle and let each kid share what their own rhythm is and then we try and match it. And another great thing with the shakers is if the class has kind of gotten into a little bit of chaos, it's the same way that, you know, you would do a and then get the kids to kind of echo. But if they're not quite at that point,
point where they can echo something so complicated, I'll just start doing a clap and a pat on my lap and just get the kids to follow me. Follow me. Let's see. You follow me, right? And then if it's you follow me, you follow me. Let's see. You follow me. And that's just going in four different directions and just doing a little, little sassy, you know, keep it fun. Okay, now we've talked about changing songs. We've talked about our rhythm. Let's see. Let's see. Oh yeah, Down by the Bay, my favorite. So again, uh, getting the comfort level of the kids um, maybe they've heard Down by the Bay on Raffi, so they can give the already an example of a whale with a polka dot tail. Down by the bay, where the watermelons grow, back to my home, I dare not go, for if I do, my Angie would say, or my Octavia would say, and then I'll ask her, did you ever see a boy turn into a toy <gasps> down by the bay? Great. Okay, so that's the first part, and then we're going to do our goodbye song to wrap up our music circle. I find with kids you can get to that 20-minute, half-hour point, and I... Uh, They've had lots of fun and lots of giggles. Um, and we'll do our See You Later song that I think everyone is quite familiar with at the Oak Bay Preschool and many other classrooms, like Gonzales as well. So we do this one here. Of course, I'm going to try and get the puppet to do as much as she can with me. See you later, alligator, in a while. I'll put her on my shoulder. Crocodile, give a hug. Ladybug, blow a kiss. Jellyfish, take care. Polar bear, out the door. Dinosaur, see you soon. Baboon, wave goodbye. Butterfly. Okay, thank you for joining me for this first part of the transitions tutorial. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.